Welcome to the North Group Podcast. At North Group, we are often invited into organizations to influence leadership and organizational behaviors. It is through these sustained relationships that we gain a deeper understanding of each client and the many ways they benefit their employees, their customers, and the broader community. It is impressive. Through this podcast series, we will be sharing the stories of a few of these clients and how they make our communities better. Natalie, I've been uh, in business over 40 years now, 30 of which have been in uh, you know, external or outward facing positions where I've had the opportunity to visit, I'm sure it's literally hundreds, perhaps even thousands uh, of businesses. So on some level, I tend to think that I can go into a, an organization, a business, a ministry, uh, whatever it might be, and pretty immediately recognize the business model, mm-hmm. how they operate, and, 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 and you know, just how it all adds up to bring value. The Factory Ministries, which is a uh, client of North Group, uh, someone we're extremely pleased to represent, has a very unique business model that it took me some time to understand. I remember my first meeting with the board of directors. And by the way, I'm here with my, my friend, my colleague, Natalie Meese, who is a board member mm-hmm. uh, of the factory ministries and uh, has served there in a consulting role over a number of years. Describe to us the uniqueness of the factory. Yes, well, unlike many other organizations, the factory is truly based on collaboration. That was the foundation. That's of, not just a word. It is not just a word. And in fact, I thought I knew what collaboration meant. But when I went to the factory, I realized I had a lot to learn. They are so focused on serving the community in a collaborative way that I recognize I have a lot that I can learn from this organization. But they didn't start with the business model. They started with asking the question, how can we help? And from wow. there, built a business model around that question, but they didn't seek to create something great. They just sought to create a way to serve the community. Can you tell us a little bit how they got started? Yes. Was there a germination there? Uh, yeah. How, how, did it get, how did it get going? Yes. Well, my understanding is that there was two churches in the area that saw a need in the community, specifically around poverty, Okay. and thought, we want to help. But rather than assuming we know how to help, we're going to start by asking the question. So they asked questions of the school board, of local township representatives, of individuals in the area, and said, how can we help the community? And at that time, the response that they received was, we, we need a safe place for our teens to go. And so, so that was the strongest response they got back? At that time, I okay. think that was 2004. Okay. That was the strongest response they got back. So they went into action, creating a youth center at the time. It took place in an old sewing factory. Mm -hmm. So students from across Peckway Valley had a place where they could come, hang out, have fun in a positive environment. Mm -hmm. And from there, that's kind of how the name The Factory started because it got- Because of the sewing factory? In a sewing factory. I actually did not know that. Yes. Yep. And so that's where initial programming and everything got started. It's no longer in a factory, but the name stuck. And now it's in a, uh, a, a, a building that used to be a school, correct? Correct. So it's old Paradise Elementary School. They, Paradise School District, rebuilt a brand new building. Mm-hmm. And in that transition, actually sold the old elementary school building to the factory for a dollar. And wow. really gifted the factory as well as the community with what we now consider a hub for Peckway Valley. You know, I've heard this term over the years, it fairly, was fairly popular a number of years ago, maybe it still is, public-private partnerships. Mm-hmm. Uh, the factory is actually more than that. Absolutely. They are a true community partnership. Can you tell us uh, what parts of the of the Eastern Lancaster County community they've brought together there around this around this how can we help question yes and that's where you know I really learned a lot from the factory about collaboration and what that truly looks like but they have collaborated with all sectors of the community so it is not unusual at a meeting at the factory to see representatives from the township to see representatives okay. from the school board um, in fact, the superintendent of Peckway Valley School Board is involved heavily in the factory. Other nonprofits organizations, United Way, Tabor, 
North Star that take part in trying to solve this issue of poverty in Pequay Valley. And it expands to individuals in the business, to local community members. There's just this collaborative mindset that together we can accomplish more. And we might have a lot of differences in how we think that can be accomplished, but we're going to put those aside for the betterment of our community. So one thing I, another thing that I really uh, like, and I think I've observed this, but I'm going to ask you to comment on it, is the factory is unapologetically faith-based ministry. Absolutely. But not everybody that they are asking to help, or as you put it, collaborating with, comes from that same foundation. Is that correct? And how do they make that work? Absolutely. So they're mission statement tagline in a sense is because of what Christ has done for us, everyone's journey matters. Okay. Yep. And with that being the mindset, obviously there's a faith-based component Mm -hmm. to that and they partner with local churches in Mm -hmm. the area. But the second piece of that is everyone's journey matters. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter if you're aligned in in faith-based perspectives, they still want to value the individual and be willing to engage in the tough conversations Mm -hmm. in order to find the betterment of each person in the community. Uh, We would think of different community-based resources that exist in most, if not all, communities like a food pantry, Mm -hmm. uh, clothing, secondhand clothing resource, uh, debt counseling, uh, services to find housing. That's all in one place at the factory? Is that accurate? That's accurate. They want to be a resource. So at the factory, they believe that poverty is not just an absence of financial resources. It's much beyond that relational, spiritual, um, even physical needs. And so they have created a hub in order to try to address all aspects of poverty and really serve in those ways. So there is a food pantry. There is a social services available for adults to get that counseling. They call it coaching, goal settings, things of that nature. They also have elementary advocates and services and kindergarten readiness programs mm. in order to serve everyone from zero, age zero to adults um, and provide resources for individuals to be empowered to move forward and take steps out of poverty. Do you have a sense early, early on you talked about how these two churches came together and rather than assuming things about needs, they just asked, how can we help of a variety of people? And the the early on answer, they got a safe place for our teens. Now we've got a life cycle resource here. How did that, how did that get built out? I think a lot of it really is organic growth, Okay, but it goes back to that initial statement. The factory just continues to ask the question, How can we help? Oh, so they haven't stopped asking that question? No, they've never stopped asking that question. And that question continues to get asked Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And they have also partnered with uh, a resource in Peckway Valley called the Together Initiative Network, which is, I I know, a little bit of a brainchild that the factory was part of Mm -hmm. to create, but it's this concept of individuals from the community coming together on a quarterly basis to address these issues Mm -hmm. and come up with strategic solutions. Granted, they're huge, huge issues. Mm-hmm. So it's a process over time, but looking to be strategic and proactive and how they can address these challenges. You know, I remember the first time that I visited uh, the school, the school building where the factory is now located on Route 30 in Eastern Lancaster County. Um, it's probably about six years ago. I, I didn't look it up, but let's call it six years ago. What I visited then and what I visited at the homecoming a month or so ago, just a beautiful event, uh, several hundred people there and so forth. Transformational differences in the building, in the staff, in the in the heart of the ministry. What do you attribute that to? And, and you have firsthand knowledge. You were a North Group consultant there as we served them for an interim period of time. We were part of Adam Nagel's hiring, executive director, terrific leader. Uh, and now you're on the board. So maybe talk a little bit about what you personally experienced at the factory. I would say my personal experience definitely mirrors what you've described. I first became aware of the factory in 2018 through working and serving them as a North Group consultant. Um, And at that time, North Group was welcome to the factory in a little bit of a time of crisis. And there was a great foundation 
for the factory at that point. They had already been doing incredible work in the community and making tremendous strides, but it was a time of transition. And I was honored to be part of that transition and support the factory in bringing in uh, the current executive director, Adam Nagel. And I would say that that really was a turning point for the factory. Mm -hmm. Adam is the right man for the job. (laughs) And when the right person is in the right seat, equipped with the right team, Mm -hmm. beautiful things happen. And that is exactly what I would say is happening at the factory. And his leadership has flourished and just brought the best out of something that was already strong, but, you know, developed it to their next level, as we like to say at North Group, helping the factory achieve its highest potential. And I truly see him doing that on a daily basis. Yeah. And now it's to the point where other, other communities are looking to the factory's model and saying, is it possible for us to replicate that in our own community? That's actually happened in the community in which our business is located. Yeah. Uh, something startup called the Warwick Hub. And they're looking at other organizations like the factory because that business model has been so successful. And I think it's successful for the reason that you spoke about earlier, asking, not assuming things. Not assuming things, asking the question, really listening, really observing, really wanting to understand and put yourself in the shoes of someone else to see all perspectives and then working together to find a collaborative solution. You know, in a world that right now seems so divided, I do not experience that at Mm. the factory at all. Oh, that's great. But it's a, it's a humble process. Mm. It's people being humble, saying, I care more about solving this issue than my own personal agenda. And I'm going to lay aside my agenda in order to find the best solution and truly collaborate. And it's been amazing to watch some of the creative ideas that have come as a result of individuals just taking that posture and really serving the people versus trying to achieve some personal goal. Another, that, 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 that's such a great insight, the, the, the posture idea, just the, the idea that I, I, I want to help make something better here, but I've got to ask questions and learn and set aside preconceptions, sure. uh, notions I may have had before. And one more thing I noticed I would like to ask you to comment on is you're a board member now, uh, but it would almost be out of sync for a board member to just go to a board meeting Absolutely. and comment on governance and finance and, 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 and leadership and things of that nature. Everybody is serving there. Yes. You've had that experience. Uh, talk about that a little and maybe, maybe a, a relationship that's grown out of that for you. Absolutely. And I've thought about this many times and I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something special about the factory. There's something special when you go there that it just resonates with you. And I've had the opportunity through North Group to serve in interim capacities with a variety of organizations, but I couldn't let go of the factory Mm -hmm. when it was time for our relationship (laughs) to transition. And so um, I did take a few months where I wasn't actively involved, but then pandemic hit 2020 started and the factory was on the front lines Mm. of really serving the Pequay Valley community during that season. And I felt compelled to step back and be involved. And so I wasn't on the board at that time. And at that point, the way that I served was every Thursday night, even during the lockdown, you know, we were considered essential at Mm -hmm. that point, went to the factory and participated in a drive through food giveaway distribution and got to see the people up close, up front. We were all in masks, you know, barely able to see anything but the eyes of the individual in the car. But it was such an impactful time for me that I knew I had to stay involved Mm. and that there was something special about this organization. And so I did volunteer throughout the entire pandemic, thought it would be a few weeks, ended up being several, several months and much longer than I anticipated. But my, I, my opportunity to join the board came as a result of the serving that I was able to do at the factory and the about the uh, the presence of being there on a regular basis, making connections with the people, making rela- building relationships with the team members, because that's what they're about is relationships. And honestly, it would be rare for a board member at the factory to join the board if there wasn't a previously established relationship, because that's that's who we are. We make relationships with people. And those relationships just don't end. You know, they, they continue on. Well, thank you for that service, Natalie. Thank you for representing North Group so well, and thank you for serving the Factory Ministries. We are honored to serve the Factory Ministries. They make our communities better. 